David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another video. Near the conclusion of each of the past few years, I have posted a video of my favorite discoveries from the previous 12 months, and it is time to continue that tradition. In regard to the pens and related items, this has been an incredible year of discovery. When I went back and counted them, I was surprised how many reviews I did of brands which I had never reviewed before. Now, I was previously familiar with some of those brands, but a lot of them were new to me. And I love making new discoveries. There is a lot to go over in this video. I, I've broken it down into five different sections. Uh, there's ink, office supplies, some miscellaneous items. I'll talk about my favorite videos of this year, and most importantly, show you my favorite pens. And just as a reminder, the items I am sharing in this video are not my overall favorites in my collection. Uh, they are my favorites from the items which I acquired, reviewed, or discovered this year. And in order to take a look at those items, please join me over here at camera two. There are a lot of items to cover in this list, so things are going to be moving rather quickly. Uh, to begin with, I have three inks I wanted to highlight. First of all, we have something from Tasia called Saba Midori. Um, I just adore this ink. Um, what's really cool about it is that when it goes on the paper, it goes on kind of blue and then transitions into this green with a little bit of a reddish sheen to it. Um, I just think it looks fantastic in a number of different pens. Uh, and this is an ink that as soon as I bought it, I had to then go out and buy another bottle because I know that eventually I will be done with this and uh, be wanting more. So this has been uh, an ink that I've been very fond of this year. Next up is an ink from Dominant Industries. It comes in this neat little pouch. I kind of keep it in there. It also comes with a, a little eyedropper, which is nice. Uh, and this is their Milky Way Blue. I think this bottle looks really sharp as well. As you can see, it's part of their Pearl series. Um, that this is what the ink looks like. You know, I'm typically really not into like heavy shimmer inks, but there's just something about this one that uh, the particles seem very small and it's almost like a subtle shimmer, almost more of a, a shimmerish sheen, which um, I enjoy. You can see here, you can see that uh, kind of silvery shimmer in here. If you shake it up, then it goes away a little bit. But uh, this is another uh, kind of vibrant blue that I have enjoyed as well. And finally, in regard to inks, I have an ink which was, again, another new brand for me, and that is Color Traveler. Uh, and this one is the Satuchi Shimanami Blue. Um, uh, this packaging is really cool. See, it's Color Traveler, and this is like a little suitcase. This kind of reminds me of uh, the Colorverse packaging, where you get a little insert here with some stickers. Uh, you receive an eyedropper. There is a little vial if you wanted to do a sample. And then we have the ink. Um, the color is really nice. Um, it is kind of a, a nice kind of aqua blue. Uh, and I, I really like it. Uh, it's one that I've kind of really been uh, enjoying this shade of ink recently uh, with things like the uh, Stilo and Stile Roman Bronze Oxidation and uh, Leonardo Smeraldo. They're all kind of in that same color scheme and, uh, and, and I like it a lot. It looks great in a number of pens. Okay, next up, I have some items for the office. Um, first up is some storage and that would be the NFP block. I learned this year about the brand at the DC show. Uh, they are based in Turkey, and I can't say enough good things about this case. It is extremely well made. I just love the color, and it's just a really a solid addition to your storage options. Uh, next up is my standing desk from FlexiSpot. I renovated and rearranged my home office this year, and the impetus for that was getting this desk. Uh, since I have received this, I find myself standing more. Um, it's given me a lot more desk surface in order to get things a bit cleaner and more organized. Uh, yeah, it's just a great desk. And then finally in the office category is a chair, which was this Odin Lake Ergo Plus 743. I really like this chair. 
This is how much I like this chair. Uh, Odin Lake had provided me with a chair for review. I took that chair to use at my office at work, and I liked it so much that I needed to purchase a second chair just so I could have one to use at my home. And during my videos, you can see that this is the chair I am sitting in. Uh, the leg rest is a real game changer for me as well. Okay, on to the miscellaneous category. And after that, we'll get to some pens. You know, first up is something I've yet to discuss on this channel, but this is great. Uh, this is a tool available from Shown Design that helps you in cleaning your pens. It's called the Lure. Uh, the key element here is this black piece, which is shaped to fit different converters. This one here is uh, made for Pilot. If you've ever tried to flush out a vanishing point, sometimes it can be a challenge with a bulb syringe, uh, and this tool makes it extraordinarily easy. Um, this one here, the tip just comes right off. Uh, this one here was kindly provided by Shown Design, but I liked it so much that I have ordered one for uh, Yovo nibs and another for Sailor nibs. Uh, that's you, when you know. Uh, that's when you know something is really good. Uh, just like that chair, when you are given something at no cost, but then you still go out and purchase more. Next up is something fun, which is this Barbasol can that I know just barely fits in this screen. Um, you might have noticed it sitting behind me on my desk in recent videos. If you are a fan of the movie Jurassic Park, you'll be familiar with what this is, which is a replica of the cryo can. Um, I just thought this might be, the top comes off, and there is the cryo can. I thought this might be a fun way to uh, store some ink samples. Um, I didn't have high expectations in regard to the quality, uh, but was pleasantly surprised. Uh, this base part here is actually very solid and contains some metal, so it's not just uh, plastic or 3D printed. Now, the place I purchased this has been sold out for a while, and I'm certain when if they will ever have more, so unfortunately I don't have a link to purchase there. I know that uh, folks have asked me for it in the past whenever I've shown it, uh, but this was a fun little purchase that I have enjoyed. I purchased something a couple of years ago, but just got around to hanging it in my office, so it's like something new to me, and that would be a cue card from Wally. Uh, if you are not familiar, Wally works for NBC in New York and runs the cue card department for shows like Saturday Night Live and Late Night with Seth Meyers. And he has a service where for a very reasonable cost, you can have him make a cue card for you with uh, the saying of your choosing. Uh, there are a few restrictions he's not allowed to put on there, but for the most part, anything you want. Uh, he has a website, just Google cue cards by Wally and you'll see it. Uh, it's one of those things that a very small group of people would know what it is and feel it's really cool. I kind of like those things. I gravitate towards those things. It's like being part of a secret club. Um, this would actually make for a really neat gift as well. And finally in the miscellaneous category would be the most recent Gold Spot Pens catalog. I know this really doesn't fit in the, in the screen. Uh, where on page 22, you can read an interview with myself. Uh, it was kind of fun being fe featured in a print interview like this. Uh, and I've made several purchases from Gold Spot. As a, so as a retailer, it's one I would recommend as well. Okay, let's get to some pens. I have 11 of them. Well, I have 11 slots with a few more pens that, well, you'll see here in a minute what I'm talking about. Um, if you want additional details on any of them, I have reviews of each except for one on my channel. Uh, this has been a great year of pen discoveries and to lead things off, I have three different pens from a maker who I discovered early on in the year and then featured another one of her pens late in the year. The company is Shiubi North, and the pens are the Ketsune, uh, and then we have the Creepy Little Skulls, and the Pocket Fox. Um, the patterning on this metal engraving uh, on the Ketsune is just mesmerizing. Um, I really like this large ink window as well. Uh, and then also the nib is Cerakoted. I just think it's just a really sharp looking pen. And then we have a similar model, if I can hold it, a similar model, but this one here is engraved with these creepy little skulls. Uh, Ruth, the woman behind this brand, has been doing a lot of experimenting uh, with laser engraving, and she's decent at art as well. Um, I just really love also the skulls that are on the nib of this pen as well. Um, and then finally, we have the Pocket Fox. 
Um, this is hard to see with this rainbow PVD treatment, uh, but on the eyes of some of these skulls that uh, she customized this pen and put my Fig Boot logo. Uh, I purchased this pen for her and she was nice enough to uh, do that customization. Uh, that's one of the neat things about artisans and individual craftsmen is that they can often customize your, the work and create one of a kind work, which makes your pens that much more special. Up next is a pen which was very high on my Grail pen wish list for many years, and that is the Omos 360. Uh, this model here is in a translucent turquoise. I, I love the looks of this color. The shape of the pen is very unique in its triangular design. Um, I love the swooping clip. Uh, and the original Omos nibs, in my opinion, uh, are some of the best nibs ever made. Just outstanding. Um, I was able to pick this pen up at an auction at the Triangle Pen Show, a new, unused, and still in the wrapper and box. Um, it's always fun to attend an auction where there are some items that you want to attempt to win. And I was glad I was able to secure this pen here. It is really a classic. Third on my list is something I won't spend too much time on because it'll be the subject of my next review. So consider this to be a sneak peek. I sent a pen off to Bucamondo, which arrived back to me last week, and it is stunning. Here it is. This is a Sailor King of Pen Ebonite. Um, like I said, I go into substantially more detail in my next video about this pen and the process of ordering it, uh, but there is a talented artisan by the name of Hiroko who lives in Japan, and the name of her company is Bukumondo, and she does the most amazing Arushi and Rodden work. Um, her wait list is very long, but well worth the wait. Uh, stay tuned in a couple of days to learn all about Hiroko and her work, but needless to say, this pen was well-deserved of a place on this list. I just can't stop looking at it. It is mesmerizing and in my opinion, extremely beautiful. I enjoy when pen companies innovate. Uh, innovate can come at a risk. Not every venture will be successful, but when they are, it can be very satisfying. The innovation I have at this slot on this list is indeed very satisfying. And that would be the Modonk nib from Shown Design. Uh, it is unique in its look. Let's actually show what the nib looks like. Uh, and the performance is outstanding as well. Uh, Ian Schoen is in, and his team uh, have had this nib in development for a number of years. Uh, they have honed and fine-tuned the design uh, into this final product. Um, you know, I like products that are different than anything else in my collection. Uh, and that certainly could be said for this tubular nib. Um, it was a great innovation, and I can't wait to see what Ian and his team come up with next. And it's just a lot of fun to use as well. Next up is a pen from a company I was familiar with. I had seen them at a couple of DC shows over the years, but I had yet to have one of their pens really catch my eye. That was until this year. The company is Santini, and this pen here is called the Giant 8. Um, I love the size of this pen. It's very large. And I'm also fond of this deep blue pearlescent resin. Uh, Santini makes their own nibs, and this oversized number eight nib fits the overall size of this pen well, and it performs nicely also. Uh, this was the only pen I purchased at the DC show this year, and I'm glad that the one pen I did purchase was a winner. Uh, this pen has been a lot of fun to use. Coming in at number six is a pen from Tasia, which is another pen that I've used a great deal this year, and that is the Miyabi Kaga Summer Shimmer. Um, I really love the treatment on this pen. It has an ebonite base and a yellowish gold background and these black arushi striations that remind me of a tree or some rock formations. Um, you know, I really enjoy the tactile feelings of these lines as well. Um, it does have the artist's signature here at the bottom. Uh, Tasia's nibs are manufactured by Sailor. Um, the only thing is I wish that this had the Sailor King of Pen nib. I thought that that would be a little bit more size appropriate, but the Sailor nib is outstanding uh, and it writes very, very nicely. Um, this is a pen which for several months I kept inked on my desk here at home. Uh, it is a luxury pen, but it provides luxury performance as well. 
Sometimes one single part of a pen can stand out so much that it overshadows in a good way the rest of the pen. And that was the case with the next pen on this list, which is the Magna Carta Mag 600. I'll admit the pen itself isn't something which really thrilled me. It's a bit on the lighter side than I would like. And the black and gold look just isn't one of my personal favorites. But what is fantastic about this pen is this 14 karat gold flex nib. Um, you know, I am typically not a flex nib guy, but this nib is just a lot of fun to use. Um, you could write with just normal pressure just fine, uh, but with just a small amount of pressure, you can see that, that those tines open up really nicely. Um, and that you can get a decent amount of flex out of this nib. Uh, and it, like I said, I've said with a few of these pens, uh, this is one that's just a lot of fun to write with. Next up, I'm grouping three pens from small artisan shops. We have the Mad Science Pen Company Beta Type R. Uh, then we have the Hello Tello Venice Oversize. And then also we have the Rockster Daydreamer. Um, what I love about each of these pens is how unique they are. Um, in regard to the Mad Science Pen Company, it's an incredibly unique design. It has this very small cap, the fluted section. I love this frosted blue and then the interesting resin barrel. Um, in regard to the Hello Tello pen, again, this is a very unique design. Another smallish cap. Um, a very thick section, uh, and I love this unique micarta material. Um, would I like all of the pens in my collection to uh, be like these two? No, but I do enjoy things that are unique and unlike other pens. In regard to the Rockster, um, I just love this burled maple. This wood is infused with resin, producing this unique look. Um, this is the other Rockster pen that I own, um, and that I love this purple as well. It's also neat to see how an artisan improves their product over time. Um, like on the end of the pen, this is the older medallion, but there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, but then this newer sterling silver one looks fantastic. Um, if you are not familiar with the work of these three artisans, I would highly recommend checking out their offering. Okay, three more slots to go. Uh, in this slot, I cheated a bit again and wanted to feature the outstanding collaborations between Leonardo and the Italian retailer Stilo and Stile. They have just been killing it with their limited edition Memento Zeros this year. Um, there was the Micarta. Um, I've always loved Micarta as a material, and this pen uses that material very well. Um, and then we have the two space-themed Black Friday offerings. There was the Violetta, and then there is the Andromeda. Uh, both of these pens are just really sharp and pull off the outer space theme well. And then finally, we have the Prisma from Radius. Uh, Radius is a company that is also owned by Leonardo. Uh, I am a sucker for this white frosted resin and the rainbow PVD treatment, especially when it peeks through here in the back. I think it really plays nicely off that material. Uh, the nib even has the PVD treatment as well. Uh, this is just a sharp looking pen. Uh, all four of these pens are great. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Stilo and Stile comes up with next year in regard to their limited edition pens. Next to last here, and that would be a pen from Sailor, the Progear Imperial Black. I picked up this pen from Yuseka Stationery in Brooklyn the last time I was up in New York City. If you have never visited Yuseka Stationery, I would recommend it. It is a great shop. Now, I will admit that this pen is a bit expensive. It costs a bit more than I feel it should, but I just love the Pro Gear model and I am a sucker for matte black finishes. Um, the pen performs very well and it really reminds me of that trip that I took to New York. When you can tie pens to personal memories and experiences, then they become that much more special. And this pen is special to me. Okay, last pen, and it's one I recently reviewed, and that would be the Inso Piuma Arushi. Uh, this was a passion project for Carlo Aiello, the gentleman behind the Enso brand, and it turned out really, really well. 
it, I was very impressed with the quality of this pen. It has an ebonite base and an Akatamanuri uh, Rushi finish. On top of that, it has a gold nib, a 14 karat gold nib, and was very reasonably priced, under $400. Uh, this was a limited edition of 50, and I wish Enzo would have made 500. It was a great pen, especially if you wanted to get an Arushi pen for a very nice price. And it's worthy of being included on this year's list. Okay, final thing. I like to mention some of my favorite videos of the year. Um, I'd have to say that one of my favorites was the video I did talking about visiting all 50 states. Um, I know it has nothing to do with fountain pens, but being able to check that last state off my list was a personal accomplishment that I wanted to document, and it was fun to remember and reminisce about trips and adventures that I had been on over my lifetime. Another video I enjoyed was my office renovation. My office was getting a bit cluttered and doing this video was a good impetus for getting more organized. And finally, a video that I did a few weeks ago was my updated list of grail pens. It had been several years since my last grail pen video and it was interesting to look back at the older versions and seeing how my collection and tastes has changed over the years. But that was a fun topic to revisit. Okay, there you have it. Another year of reviews. In October, it was the eight-year anniversary of this channel. Uh, over that time, I have posted just under 700 videos with 9.9 .9 million views, tantalizingly close to 10 million, which is an incredible number. It has been a lot of fun. I have enjoyed the creative outlet of producing content, the professional relationships I've been able to build have been amazing, uh, as well as all of the new pen friends I've made along the way. Um, I look forward to being able to produce bigger and better things this upcoming year, and I greatly appreciate all of the support and time you take out of your day to watch the content I produce. I hope it provides you some solid information as well as some entertainment. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.